Roy is many things, but one thing he isn't is quick off the blocks. But there may be an answer. Over the last few years on Field Sports Britain, I'm sure the viewers have realised that I'm a little bit short, a little bit wobbly, and carried a few too many pounds. But thanks to the advancement in science, that has completely been blown out of the water. And I am definitely now a little bit taller, a little bit faster, and a damn sight smoother. Roy's been offered the chance of using the off-road Segway type machine by two visiting Dutch air rifle hunters who regularly charge around the British countryside on these quiet and capable two-wheelers. It's my tongue poking out, that's the thing that doesn't look good. Looking for quarry. For Roy it's more important than that. For the first time in a long time he's able to cover ground in relative comfort with stealth and at a decent pace. So, after a practice session, it's time to mount up and steer the machine out into the field. All joking aside, I've always wanted to have a go on a Segway. I've always thought that there's a possibility of being able to use them for stalking. I mean, they've got their limitations. We're not going to be able to use them on the hill in Scotland or whatever else, but stalking species like Roe and Muntjac, I think for anybody that's got a physical disability, then any aid that you can use, I think, can only be a good thing. So what I want to try today is to get around some of the little spinnies and woods that we've got here and try and see if we can call in any muntjac. And it's really just to see if we can stalk into position. I think though that trying to shoot off one of these is going to be an impossibility, so I'm going to have to dismount before we take the shot. Roy has always dreamed of having the wrong trousers grommet and now he has them, but will the machine really get us near deer? It's certainly quiet and as long as the rides are clear we should have a pretty decent shot at stalking in close. Then again... Despite teething problems, we spot a muntjac and Roy dismounts to sound the butlo call. We all but give up hope, but then we realise a buck has sneaked up behind us, so the call worked a treat. We just need eyes in the backs of our heads. What a shame, isn't that typical? Really, really nice buck. He's still kicking off there, and he snuck up right behind us. Not more than 15 yards behind us, but he walked straight into us and made us. So, um, he just kicked off and disappeared off behind us, so that's a shame. It would have been absolutely perfect. <laughs> We've upset him. For a bit of fun, we try and find this stroppy buck. Jack, our feisty little deer. We let him be. We've got ground to cover, and in style. Roy's newfound freedom means cameraman David is left lagging behind. This idea may not have legs after all. The next two calls deliver out, but we're covering lots of ground. Then we get another sighting. It's brief, but clearly the silver chariot is not affecting our chances badly. With poor weather and light levels falling, it's not to be, but what a fun couple of hours we've had. I suppose the big question is, when I actually go out and buy one of these, and I think after the amount of fun that I've had this afternoon, the uh, answer is most definitely yes. The only downside is I'm enjoying the speed too much, so I'm trying to get to places a lot quicker than obviously I would walk, because I tend to be a little bit slower than most other people, and I tend to find that by being slow, it gives you more chance to use your binoculars to glass and to see more. Whereas today, I did actually bump a few deer because I was just getting carried away with it. If I could learn to ride it a little bit slower, it might work. But at the moment, I've got to be honest, I'm just enjoying the speed. What a buzz. Well, actually more of a hum.